This episode of Baking Wisdom is brought to you by LG Canada, and we'll hear more from them later in the episode. Welcome to Baking Wisdom. This is my series based on my new cookbook of the very same name. And in it, I share my years of baking experience with you along with a ton of recipes. The whole goal, to make you the best baker possible. And today's recipe, well, it's time to think fall. I am making a pumpkin pie, but this is pumpkin pie with a fall twist. It has roasted white chocolate in it. That's right. It lends a silky texture and a beautiful caramel flavor. And that's where I'm going to start with this recipe. We've got to roast the white chocolate before we even get into the pumpkin filling. The first thing you need to do is preset your oven to a low temperature, 250. You want to slowly roast the chocolate. You'll need eight ounces of chocolate. Even though these look like regular white chocolate chips, this is couverture or baking chocolate. So the chocolate will melt smoothly and stay smooth. And roasting white chocolate is relatively simple. You budget an hour and at every 15 minute mark, you're going to stir the white chocolate. Take it out of the oven, give it a stir and you'll watch it transform. It will change in texture and in color as you cook it. So in it goes and set the timer for 15 minutes. At every 15 minutes, the color and the texture of the white chocolate changes. When you start stirring, if you see that it seems thick or even that it's seizing up, relax. Just keep stirring, smooth it out as much as you can and put it back in the oven to keep cooking for that next 15 minutes. Once you get to an hour, then you're ready to make the roasted white chocolate ganache. After 15 minutes, you're just stirring the chocolate to make sure it's evenly melted. So you can see the white chocolate is about 90% melted. Back in the oven for another 15. At 30 minutes, you may find the white chocolate is starting to thicken up a little bit and that's okay. You still give it a good stir to smooth it out. Oh yeah, it's starting to thicken up in parts, but there's no color change at this point. Spread it out again. And back in the oven for another 15. A little bit of baking wisdom. You can use your preheating oven to melt chocolate for a chocolate recipe. Say I'm making a chocolate cookie recipe and it calls for four ounces of dark chocolate. I'll put my chocolate in a little dish, pop it in the oven as I'm preheating the oven. By the time I get my pan and my other ingredients ready, well, the chocolate is melted. I pull it out, give it a little stir. It has a chance to cool and I'm ready to bake. Now look at this, after 45 minutes, the chocolate is actually seizing up and you're starting to see a little caramel color develop. This is why the stirring is needed. You wanna bring that cocoa butter back in contact with the other ingredients. And as you keep stirring, it smooths out again. It won't turn fluid, but it will smooth out. Back in the oven it goes, just one more time. 15 minutes and then we'll be ready to make the roasted white chocolate ganache. And this is when the white chocolate is transformed. It looks grainy right now, but you'll see it's the color of peanut butter. So all those sugars in the white chocolate have now caramelized. So I give it a stir just to smooth it out again. So now to make it usable as a sauce, it's gonna sweeten the whipped cream I put on top of the pumpkin pie. And to sweeten and flavor the pumpkin filling, I need to make a ganache. Now I'm going to add it to some hot cream. So I'll set this aside for a second. And I've heated up half a cup of whipping cream and I'll add the hot white chocolate to it and whisk it all together. That roasted white chocolate will melt into the cream and it essentially becomes a roasted white chocolate, almost a caramel sauce as much as a ganache. 
I love that color and the aroma coming off of the white chocolate is exactly like caramel, but yet it's got more depth to it and it won't be as bitter. That's where the slow roasting comes in. I love how this smooths out. This is what I wanted to show you. Even though you think that white chocolate might be seized and may not smooth out, the minute you add the cream, all works out. See, cream fixes everything. Now I'll transfer this to a container to cool. And I wanna work with the ganache at room temperature for both my pumpkin filling and for my whipped cream topping. So I'll just set it aside to cool and get my pumpkin pie filling ingredients ready. Making the pumpkin pie filling is easy. First, you wanna preheat your oven to 350. I've got all my ingredients for the pumpkin pie filling and I'll touch on the pie pastry in just a minute. Let's get that filling mixed up. First, I have my pure pumpkin puree. So there's no added sugar or spices to this at all. That's the base of the pumpkin pie. And in addition to the roasted white chocolate, I do add just a touch of light brown sugar. I'll give that a little whisk. Now it's time to add that roasted white chocolate ganache. It's had a little time to cool. It's still a touch warm, but I like to work with it when it's fluid. If you're making your roasted white chocolate ganache ahead of time, you can store it refrigerated and then just warm it up over low heat until it's fluid, or you can pop it in the microwave for 15, 20 seconds. It really is like a caramel sauce. I love its glossiness. Now for a little bit of whipping cream because a pumpkin pie filling really is a custard. And so between the eggs and the pumpkin and cream as your liquid, that's what sets into that silky, chilled pumpkin pie filling. To set the filling, I have three egg yolks and one whole egg. And of course, I can't forget about those pumpkin pie spices. Now, since I'm already giving this pumpkin pie a little twist by adding the roasted white chocolate ganache, I changed the spices just a little bit from the traditional pumpkin pie spice. First, I don't want to overwhelm the white chocolate ganache. I want you to be able to taste that caramel flavor. So I pull back on the spices and I include cinnamon, ginger, and clove, which you would expect but I also add some ground cardamom. And I find that lightens up the spice profile of the pumpkin pie filling so that that caramel flavor from the roasted white chocolate really comes through. Oh, let me tell you, when this pie bakes, that combination of the pumpkin, the subtle spices, and then that roasted white chocolate, it smells incredible, just like Thanksgiving. All right, now this is ready to go in the pie shell. This is a pre-baked pie pastry shell. And if you want the full recipe for the flawless pie dough and for tips on how to blind bake your pie shell, well, you can go check out my episode of Baking Wisdom featuring my leek and cheese quiche because I take care of all of that right there and you have access to the full recipe. As a note, the pastry shell is fully cooled. You want to do that before you add your custard filling. Here's a perk I've discovered about this roasted white chocolate version of pumpkin pie. It has less of a tendency to crack when you bake it. I think it's because of the fluid, silky texture of the roasted white chocolate ganache. This takes about 40 minutes to bake in that 350 oven, and you can check the doneness. When you give the pan a little shake, you will see that the pie is set on the outside, but about the inside 10 centimeters, it's still a bit jiggly. But don't worry, when you pull it out of the oven, it will continue to cook and set all the way through. Oh, 
While the pie is baking, let's take a moment and hear from our sponsor. This recipe is brought to you by LG Canada and the versatile LG Pro Bake Convection Range. Perfectly cook all your favorite crispy recipes, including falafels and pizza and wings, all your family favorites, in one oven using LG's built-in large capacity air fryer. The air fry setting circulates hot air at high speeds for an even cook every time. You can also count on LG's Pro Bake Convection setting to deliver precise heat, which is especially important in multi-rack baking. Because the element is at the back of the oven, not the bottom, air is distributed evenly to all racks. This means your cookies, appetizers, and more will be perfectly and evenly cooked every time. This range also has an air sous vide setting. With its low and consistent heat, you can lock in flavors so you can slowly and gently cook vacuum sealed foods or other slow cooked recipes. Keep an eye on your baking and cooking and keep the heat inside with the InstaView door. Two quick knocks on the door lights up the oven so you can check on your progress without letting out the heat. Bring the sleek design of the LG Pro Bake Convection Range to your kitchen. Here is that beautiful roasted white chocolate pumpkin pie out of the oven, cooled and chilled. So the key is when you pull the pumpkin pie out of the oven, you let it cool to room temperature before you put it in the fridge. It's almost like treating a pumpkin pie like a cheesecake. You wanna slowly change the temperature. You don't wanna shock it and risk a crack developing. So after you've cooled it, then you chill it for at least two hours. I don't know about you, but I love an ice cold pumpkin pie because that way I can put whipped cream on top of it. And we're gonna make use of that roasted white chocolate ganache. I've got my whipping cream. And where typically you add your sugar or vanilla to your whipped cream at the very end, you can add your cooled but still fluid roasted white chocolate ganache right at the beginning. And I'll whip these up together. That roasted white chocolate ganache smooths right into the whipped cream and gives it a subtle caramel color. Of course, you can dollop the whipped cream right on top of the pie, or if you'd like, you can pipe it. I've got my piping bag fitted with a large star tip. I'm just gonna do a little rope around the outside edge of the pie. What I like about the roasted white chocolate whipped cream is that it stabilizes the whipped cream so you can pipe this detail on your pumpkin pie hours ahead. And when it goes back in the fridge, it will set. There we go. This is ready to serve. If you want, you could sprinkle some toasted hazelnuts on. I find it just complements that caramel flavor. You could candy these if you want, or just leave the nuts off. And there you have it, a beautiful pumpkin pie with the roasted white chocolate ganache, ideal for Thanksgiving, or really any fall occasion. Oh, let's slice into this pie. You know, when you're planning your Thanksgiving meal, you want those key make-ahead items that you know you can look after well in advance. They're going to be delicious. And that way you can focus on being a guest at your own party. Oh, look at that pumpkin pie. Oh, you can tell how silky that pumpkin filling is. And it's all thanks to that roasted white chocolate ganache cream in there. Mmm. Mmm. The spices come through. It is silky. It is creamy. But I get that caramel underlying flavor. Just perfectly balanced with the pumpkin. I do like just that little bit of hazelnut. Mmm. If you make this pie for Thanksgiving, you are going to be a big hit. You will feel good about what you share with those you love and you feel good about yourself at the same time. Please give this recipe a try, and I'll see you again soon for another episode of Making Wisdom.